liberty in our lifetimes in a free state of our own. That's the vision. That's the dream. We are building it in New Hampshire. I'm Eric Brakey, your host and renegade statesman for the Porcupine Report. Welcome to your source for Porcupine news and free-range conversation on matters of liberty. All right, let's hop into the show. Hey there, you Porcupine you. This is your host and renegade statesman, Eric Brakey, executive director of the Free State Project. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for episode 11 of the Porcupine Report. We're going to have a great show today. So we're, I'm so glad to have you joining us as we air a new episode every single Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. If you haven't already subscribed on your favorite podcasting app, or you're being sure to tune in regularly every Wednesday on the Free State Project's X platform or Facebook page or YouTube, all of the places where uh, we make sure the Porcupine Report airs every Wednesday at 7. Um, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you're tuning in. Don't miss an episode. Really appreciate all of the wonderful feedback that I've been getting on the show you know, that was one of the really lovely things when I was at a Liberty Forum, and we had such a fantastic event with Tulsi Gabbard and so many great folks uh, coming out to join us, Glenn Jacobs, a lot of great folks. Um, so many people kept coming up to me and said, you know, I'm watching the Porcupine Report. It's now, it's a regular thing in my podcast rotation. It really, uh, it really, that positive feedback has been so nice to receive. And it's nice to know that a few people are listening and appreciate what we're putting out there as we work to bring great free range conversations with interesting people within our liberty movement and the occasional porcupine news. All right. Now, before we get in today's episode where, and I introduce our guest, uh, I want to give a promotion for, you know, the, the next big event that uh, the free state project is hosting. Of course, that is the porcupine freedom festival. This is going to be June 17th through the 23rd at Rogers Campground in beautiful Lancaster, New Hampshire. This is a family-friendly freedom festival. Man, that's four times alliteration. Family-friendly freedom festival. You aren't going to want to miss it. You know who's joining us? Who's Zooming in? Ron Paul will be Zooming in. He's going to be, we're going to have him on a massive telescreen. He's going to be speaking with us. But then there will also be so many other folks who are Zooming in physically, in person. They're Zooming by car, by train, by plane, however they're getting there. Motorboat. I don't know. I don't know how you get a motorboat to Lancaster, New Hampshire, but folks are Zooming in. You get to come and go camping with 2,000 of your favorite libertarians at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. This year, we expect to see Spike Cohen. Gene Epstein, Jeffrey Tucker, James Bovard, David Friedman, Jack Hunter, and so many more. Maybe even you, my friend. This is not to be missed. Bring your friends, bring your family, and reserve your campsite while supplies last. Tickets will sell out. They always do. So go get yours at porkfest.com. That's pork with a C, not with a K. If you, again, I warn you, if you go to porkfest with a K.com, I literally have no idea what you're going to find. I hope it's maybe some uh, some good, I don't know, some good pulled pork or something, but it won't be the family-friendly freedom festival you're looking for. So porkfestwithac.com. Get your tickets and your campsites before they sell out. All right. Now, I know that I've just been promoting one freedom festival really aggressively there, and I really do want to see you at Porkfest, but that's not enough freedom festival for this episode. In fact, we are going to be... Um, we are going to be talking about a Freedom Festival that's literally known as Freedom Fest. Uh, this is a great event that takes place every single year. I don't know exactly how long it's been going on. Our, we're going to talk with our guest about that, about this. Um, but uh, I'm really pleased to welcome to the show Valerie Durham. She is the president and CEO of Freedom Fest. Hi, Valerie. Hello, fellow porcupine. How are you? <laughs> Welcome to the porcupine free range report. conversation. What's that? <laughs> I'm ready for some free range conversation. Well, that's, that's, that's exciting. What, that's, that's what we're that's what we're up to. Some free range it. porcupines, some free range pork talk. Um, <laughs> so, well, I really appreciate you coming on and joining us uh, uh, on the show. I, I'll I'll say up front, um, 
I've been to Freedom Fest a few times myself. I have some fond memories. I haven't been every single year, but I remember um, a few years back going to Freedom Fest. It was in Las Vegas, which I believe it's back there this yeah. this year. And um, and I remember uh, Dave Smith was like the MC yeah. that year. And I was and I was busy running for Congress that year. So I not only was it a great time to go and um, uh, meet a lot of friends who love freedom and love liberty, but it was also a really great time. I had a, a, a sit down uh, fundraiser alongside Congressman Thomas Massey. To, it was a good place to meet people who wanted to Thank actually, you. you know, really support liberty. So uh, we raised a few bucks there and. Uh, my congressional campaign didn't turn out how I hoped anyway, but I really appreciated all the folks at Freedom Fest who were so supportive. So uh, that's my little bit of my Freedom Amazing. Fest experience. But for folks who have, um, but okay, how about you tell us about Freedom Fest? I've gone <laughs> already about what my experience is. No, that's so great. And I'm so delighted to hear you've been to Freedom Fest and what a fun experience to have a, a co-fundraiser with, with Thomas Massey and damn those incumbents. We really got to get rid of it. <laughs> so, um, so Freedom Fest has been around as Freedom Fest since 2007. And before that, it actually started as the FEE National Convention. And for those who are familiar, FEE oh. is the Foundation for Economic Education. I didn't realize the connection with FEE. That's, and so at the time, uh, my father, Mark Skousen, was the president of FEE. Okay. And as he was interacting with everyone, he just realized there were all these great groups doing so much wonderful work for freedom and businesses too. He comes from the financial world. He's an Austrian economist and a financial advisor. So he has worked a lot with, you know, sound money and precious metals and the stock market and capitalism. And he just realized it was so siloed and he felt that there needed to be a time and a place. And at the time it really wasn't happening. Um, where everyone who cares about liberty could come together. And so he started um, the Fee National Convention. It had about 900 people show up in uh, 2002 in Las Vegas. And because at the time we thought of that as the most libertarian you know, city in the, in the country. And um, Times have changed. changed a now, lot. Now, now New Hampshire is the one on the map. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But in 2002, that was the place to go. You could, yeah. you know, drink, gamble, go to the brothel. It was total freedom. <laughs> um, and then after it, he was uh, resigned from being the president, a few, a few years later, he actually took, you know, kind of acquired it back, turned it into a for-profit organization actually, and uh, launched it as Freedom Fest in 2007. So we've been going for 15 plus years now. Um, the goal of Freedom Fest remains the same. We want to provide a time and a location each year where a huge range of people can come together. We're nonpartisan, small L libertarian, classical liberal based, but we really try to encourage a lot of open dialogue and civil discourse. And especially as we've seen the shift in 2007 to today with so much political rancor, so much divisiveness happening on social media and elsewhere, trying to provide a platform where we can have the important conversations around liberty um, and yet do it without name calling and screaming at each other and telling the other person that they want old people to die. And, you know, all of these things on and on that happen so much in our political discourse these days. Uh, it's, it's really exciting. And I came on board around 2014 end of 2014. So 2015 was my first event and it was a real, I didn't have any background in event planning other than I was a dancer. And so when the former conference director retired, my parents said, Hey, do you want to give this a try? And of course I was, I am a libertarian. And so philosophically I was totally on board, but I had a huge learning curve. You know, <laughs> I, I had put together dance productions and what, you know, what, think, I, I know it's I know it's besides the point of Freedom Fest, but I'm curious as a former like performing artist myself, what yeah, kind great. of dance, what kind of dance uh, you did? I am an Isadora Duncan dancer and 10 extra points to you if you know who Isadora Duncan is. <laughs> That's modern, right? Modern. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, yeah. 10 points. So she is the mother. Yeah, I, 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 I learned Eric Hawkins technique. Yes. OK. Oh, I love Eric Hawkins. In fact, I've performed with the Aaron Eric Hawkins company, I was doing his adore work and they oh, were all in right. a, in and, a shared bill. 
Well, and I also cool did a lot of like masks and. I used to do a lot of Palabolus uh, style. Oh, modern dance gosh. I love Palabolus. Oh, you, you, you didn't know we were about to have a show about Palabolus modern dance. Hawkins, this is amazing. <laughs> that was so, my, yeah, my I'm first still love before I, before I uh, stumbled into politics. Oh, my goodness. All the best people are either current modern dancers or former ones. <laughs> <laughs> Even Steve Jobs said that he attributed a lot of his creativity to taking a modern dance class in college. So. Yeah, he yeah. sent you like Steve Jobs, highly that <laughs> in in your new knowledge base. Um, so, but I did draw on my dance, you know, because you put together a program, you Absolutely. bring people to perform, you know, you have you do a little catering for a reception, you sell tickets. So, but then I had to learn about hotel attrition and food and beverage, you know, minimums and union contracts. <laughs> and that little that was a fun a fun learning curve. Continues to be. But um, I, I've loved, I'm 10 years now into running Freedom Fest and it's always a huge challenge and, uh, but it's always really exciting. And so Freedom Fest continues to be, we really are trying to push that. How can we live freer lives um, yeah. in all directions? It's not just about political freedom, but it's economic, financial, health freedom, cultural freedom, social freedom, creative freedom, spiritual, mental freedom. All of those things are an important aspect. And now, so that's what we're all about. Now, now you all have had, you, I'm sure you've run into some significant challenges some years uh, mm -hmm. put, putting on this this massive conference. And boy, when I've gone, it, it is massive um, with a, it, it has seemed to me like a, a large umbrella of kind of folks on kind of the right, uh, of, um, and kind of the right of center kind of political mm -hmm. spectrum. Um, certainly with the, uh, this isn't like going to CPAC, right? You know, it's like, this is very much like has a strong libertarian emphasis, but yeah. it also seems to also attract kind of people who are kind of maybe, you know, uh, folks who are more, maybe more libertarian leaning conservatives rather than just outright libertarians. It seems like there's a nice broad coalition of folks there. Um, would you say that's accurate? That. It has been. Uh, we de After I came on board, I think we were more on the um, conservatarian side. We've been trying to shift back more and more. But in our view, we are trying to be as big tent as possible and still yeah. leading people in a particular direction. We invite, uh, we really try not to use political labels, but we invite people across the political yeah. elite spectrum to try to participate. So we've been inviting more and more what we would call liberals or progressives or what have you to be part of the conversation. And our new director yeah. of programming, Matt Day, actually he's been with us quite a few years now. I always think of him as new, um, has been really trying to broaden that appeal with our their speaker lineup and some of our topics because we need to get people to come with us. Just yeah. like we, people, they, you know, come to New Hampshire and um, turn that into a, a libertarian state in full yeah. and completeness, you know, we, if we're, I'm one, I'm of the belief that you meet people where they are yes, and you have them join you and that's how you make progress. And, um, well, of course I, I remember the year I was, the, uh, the last year I was there, I think Candace Owens was a speaker. Mm -hmm. Um, and she did some Q and a, I, I, I asked her, I remember asking her during Q and a, if she thought we would ever get to a point where, you know, we have to, states are going to start talking about secession again. I don't know that she was ready for that for that <laughs> question, <laughs> but but uh, these all these years later, of course, back then I think she was someone very much kind of like a kind of up and coming conservative voice, but more and more trending, more and more libertarian, even questioning mm -hmm. a lot of the uh, the foreign policy doctrines that the neoconservatives have um, yeah. uh, pushed in this country for so long. So I'm going to choose to believe that it was her attending Freedom Fest and rubbing elbows with so many. Uh, 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 you know, smart libertarians that's helped bring her, bring her along. In all along honesty, we literally actually get reports like that of people saying, <laughs> I came to Freedom Fest because I thought it was one thing. I was exposed to new ideas by people who were willing to talk to me and not shut me down. Yeah. Were willing to engage in real conversation. And it has been life changing for them and eye opening. We've seen not only people change their or readjust their alignment around maybe their stance on war or drug legalization or tax, you know, tax policy, what have you, and become more libertarian in general because they're presented with solid ideas from reasonable people. Um, we also have seen the launching of major businesses, new technologies. We were talking about Bitcoin in 2012 and 
you know, even before I came on board and it was kind of like, what is this thing? Should we be talking about it? Drug legalization. We've been talking about sex work so much more recently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's challenging for some people, you know, drug legalization was really challenging for a lot of people who were coming and now there's still issues around it, but the conversation flows so much better. I think sex work is the same thing. I still get a few people like, Oh, I don't know if I can exhibit. you got to, you know, decriminalize sex work coming. And I'm like, Hey, we got to listen to these different voices in yeah. order to make informed decisions. We can't just be tunnel vision. Um, none of us can be. And I think the more we can hear different things and decide how does this align with our libertarian values? Does this make us more free as individuals, right. as a society? Then let's be having that conversation. Let's not be afraid of it. Let's not be afraid of an alternative view. Yeah. Let's engage with it and figure out why is that person concerned about that issue? And how can we solve that problem through collaboration, cooperation, voluntarism, libertarian ideals and all of that? So yeah. I prefer the engagement model than the division. I can't talk to you model. <laughs> well, I, I think that's great. I mean, especially if we get so focused on like, you know, whatever our own brand of libertarianism is to the exclusion of conversation with yeah. other people, then mm -hmm. eventually it's the libertarian purity spiral. And there is no there's only one uh, uh, there's only one true libertarian in the world and it's in the world it's, and it's, it's me it's, it is. yeah it's whoever is uh, I making, am right about this making the call. <laughs> so no th I mean that's great and I I um I certainly did appreciate um kind of uh the big tent liberty approach that right. you all have there and I th I think that leads to more interesting conversations you know um not necessarily people just kind of uh uh telling each other how right they are but right. but uh but having kind of you know, I, I, I think it was, you know, one of my favorite talks, um, I think the year I went to, it was, um, boy, it was the, I'm, I'm forgetting their names. It was the uh, gentleman from Kentucky. I know G uh, Thomas Massey is very fond of who does a lot of like sustainable farm, uh, sustainable, um, uh, raising of animals. I know. And, who uh, and, and he had a debate with, uh, was it John Mackey mm -hmm. at, uh, at, of Whole Foods on, uh, whether, a libertarian should be a vegan or not, or, or vegetarian. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it was, it was a fascinating, it was a fascinating um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, debate, debate there. John Mac, uh, uh, John Mackey made some very good points that made me uh, think a little bit about it, but at the end of the day, I can't give up, a, I can't give up a cheeseburger, but those are the kinds of interesting conversations that I don't know, you see at freedom yeah. fest that you, you, you don't really see any, anywhere else, you know, the CEO of Whole Foods having a debate with a libertarian kind of uh, uh, a, a ethical kind of everyone agrees, get away from factory farms. But l let's anyway, th th it was very interesting, um, interesting conversation there. Well, And that's part of it, too, is that a lot of these conversations we need to be having are quite nuanced. And there's more there's it's it's more of a yes and mm -hmm. than a no but. And I think that's where, you know, with our adorable and lovely government, um, we get into that political power struggle where everything is about, you know, finding the, you can't grant anyone a common ground. Yeah. Um, there's all this, this power struggle going on. So divide and conquer. It is. And that's really not where solutions come from. You really have to find where you agree and and come up with uh solutions together and and that's why we do i i feel very strongly that if you can come to freedom fest and not hear something that challenges you in something that you've believed or thought about or thought you knew then you know we failed in terms of putting together a good program because um and that's one of the reasons we use a lot of debate structures and again not screaming match debates but you know presenting reasonable arguments and letting the people in the audience kind of make informed decisions and see if they change their mind. We also do our mock trial and that's really fun. We spend oh, tell us about this. So the mock trial, um, my dad came up with this idea several years ago and it's been now one of the most popular events every single year. And we put a variety of things on, on trial. We've put um, the Republican party on trial, U S foreign policy, labor unions, the public school system, gun control, immigration, uh, religion has been on trial uh, at Freedom Fest. And sometimes um, the 
you'd be surprised. You'd think that, oh, come on, gun control is going to, you know, lose. But depending that, but there's a really sincere listening to the witnesses, the, you know, whatever's being presented. It's not scripted. You're getting real, you know, testimony from experts. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the the one that surprised us the most was there. I think the vote came out in favor of U.S. foreign policy, which in a libertarian crowd seemed <laughs> really unusual. But yeah. in, in all honesty, uh, the, it was um, the way that it that everything was presented. They just did a really good job of preventing presenting that case. Also, it's argued, and you can see this debate on our YouTube channel um, at the Freedom Fest, but uh, Stephen Moore debated Paul Krugman on our stage okay. about, about e Keynesian economics. And um, many people said that Paul Krugman was just so much more prepared. He had really cogent arguments. He had these PowerPoints. And a lot of people were like, he won that debate as a debater. Now, of course, we all know that Keynesian economics is not <laughs> compared to free market economics, but it's 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 really interesting. And these debates just really get you thinking, and it allows us to present different views yeah. um, in a more open and objective way. And we really encourage that open mindedness. We we call Freedom Fest the world's largest gathering of free minds, and we really try to try to espouse that. So it's now you asked me about challenging years. So yeah, I was about to get back to that. So <laughs> we need to do it. Free range. Doing, <laughs> it is a free range conversation. It goes wherever we want. You know, to be fair on my part, I started to ask you that question, then I asked a different question. So that's on that one's on me. So uh you've been doing this for for uh well, you personally have been doing this for about a decade now, and it's yep. of course you've been going on for a while longer than that. Um some years, I imagine, are, are every year's got its own ch particular challenges. Of course, we went through one particular year that I know for everyone trying to do any event anywhere was a particular challenge. And of course, that was uh, 2020 and the COVID years. I know at at uh, at at uh, the Free State Project, we were we were very proud to have been one of the only organizations in the country going forward with our our of uh, our Porcupine Freedom Festival, like. Tell the COVID tyrants be damned. I, but if, as I recall, uh, uh, Freedom Fest did manage to hold your conference that year. But um, but perhaps you learned that uh, Nevada is not the freest state in America as it as it as perhaps you thought it was. That was such a crazy year. Um, yes. So Freedom Fest. First of all, you know, we pick, we have themes every year. We have like some big theme. We've been exploring new frontiers and healthy, wealthy, and wise and freedom rising. And, you know, is this the new American dream? Like we have all these themes every year. Is it the American revolution or the French revolution? Are we Rome? So that year we picked our theme back in the summer or the fall and we called it catch the vision. What a lovely idea for a theme. And it had the little girl in a forest reaching for a firefly. Catch the vision. You know, catch the vision of freedom. And of course, then this damn virus comes along. <laughs> catch the vision becomes catch the virus. It was like the worst. <laughs> so we're trying to deal with all that. And so as things were shutting down, we were supposed to be at Paris, at the Paris Hotel. And they said, uh, Paris is too small. We're shutting it down. But Caesar's Palace is still going to be open. So they moved us to Caesar's Palace. So we had planned the whole thing for Paris. Okay, now we're replanning it for Caesar's Palace. We plan it all for Caesar's Palace. And then they're like, okay, well, uh, there's only going to be 250 people allowed per room. You're the only event that's going to be there. So we're going to give you more space. And now you have to divide up, you know, all the rooms so that like your general session can only be two. And we're going to satellite images. So one will be a live stage more satellite. So now we're taking over the whole space. So we had to plan it again. And then they finally came back to us and they, well, they said now it's only 50 people per room, including staff. We were going to have to clean in between every single session. So we are having to build in time for all the sessions. Meanwhile, my dad is just, this is ridiculous. We're not going to do it. <sighs> you know, and I'm trying to make Caesars happy and, you know, continue the, okay, we'll comply with this, but not with that. And <laughs> this craziness. So actually 
nine days out, they were supposed to lift the 50 per group restriction and take it back to 250. And Governor Sisolak of Nevada, one of the very restrictive, blah, draconian, horrible governors at the time was like, nope, we're keeping it at 50. There was no way we could have an exhibit hall. Yeah. We had 1,100 people coming. You can't have 50 people per room for a general session. It was just impossible. So they basically made it impossible for us to have the event. And we did cancel it. And then we ended up doing a, a virtual version. Um, and you're absolutely right. The next year, 2021, um, was the first year we were not in Las Vegas because we felt we did not trust Las Vegas. We did not feel that they were any longer, you know, a, a symbol of freedom. They were just a symbol of fear and making money in a not good way. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and so we went to South Dakota and Governor Nome was very South Dakotan and was like, we're open. We invite you to come. And so we took her up on her offer. We went to Rapid City right outside Mount Rushmore and we had an awesome event. And I'm going to say, you know, people were incredible about the cancellation. Uh, the vast majority of we re refunded every single person who asked for a refund. Um, but the vast majority of people and exhibitors said, just credit me, just roll over. And that's what allowed us to stay up and running until um, awesome. the next year. Had an awesome event in South Dakota. And then we decided to, well, let's try alternating now. We'll go to Vegas in election year. We'll go somewhere else and see the country. So we're still playing around with that a little bit, see how that works. Um, but so, now this year we're back in Vegas. We had a great yeah. year in 2022 in Vegas at the Mirage. This year we're at Caesars Forum. And Governor Lombardo, Joe Lombardo, who is a much has a much more open view and is a much, much more about freedom, he's gonna come and welcome us now that he's been elected. He's gonna be part of our opening ceremonies. So we're excited. We're much more pro Lombardo and we're very anti Sisolak. Um <laughs> because of that whole drama. I, I think I still get the hives from that whole experience in 2020. Like just. I can only, I can only imagine just kind of the being yanked around like that when, when I'm you're putting on a massive event, I mean, you're bringing in thousands of people. I, I imagine, I imagine, you know, booking these spaces and the, the, fu the funds that are involved is uh, it's gotta be pretty nerve wracking when all of a sudden you're just being yanked around like, like yeah. you were. So, but no, go on. What were you going to say? Oh, I just, you know, I just, it was, it was great though. How many people were, we had all but one vendor, one partner, everyone else was like, so like, how can we work this out? They were hurting, yeah. it was hurting their businesses, but people really were trying to help each other. Yeah. And that part was, was really amazing. And it reminds me so much of what I really espouse and believe in is so many people are like, oh, capitalism is about competition and greed and you know, this negative, this negativity. And my experience in the business world is that yes, competition helps sharpen the blade, but it takes other C's to actually swing the blade and make progress. And that's collaboration and cooperation. And I really don't feel like we give enough credit to the fact that capitalism is mo much more than just competition. And that if you don't collaborate with your partners, and cooperate with your stakeholders, you can't have progress. And the more we can remember that capitalism is really a productive and positive experience when done yeah. correctly, um, that it that's what really gets us to to better and better places. I, I think it is a fair point that, you know, so often I think at, at least certainly how the left often conceives of capitalism and markets, they, they think of the oppositional forces, right? The competition and certainly competition is important, sure. right? A competitive drive to like capture more market share by pro delivering better, you know, goods and services than your, your competitors. That's great. But, but I think the other half of that is right. It's the one system that really creates win-win outcome, yeah. right? That's it's right. like, no, no, no transaction takes place unless both sides feel like they've won. Uh, unlike government, which is the absolute kind of zero sum game where at least, at least in, po at least in politics, some, one person puts their name on a ballot and, 
you know, uh, a few people put their name on a ball on a ballot and one person wins and everyone loses. And then that person gets to divvy out the loot to all their friends and we all get stuck paying for it. Absolutely. It's nothing but win lose scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, so I really appreciate that you all em uh, emphasize that. And and I do appreciate, you know, I'm looking forward to I don't think I've mentioned this yet that uh, that uh, the Free State Project is going to be at Freedom Fest this year. Yeah. We're very much looking forward to that. Um, I'm excited to go and visit uh, visit Vegas. It's been a long time since I've had a chance to um, uh, to be out in that that neck neck of the the country. Um, but I do also appreciate knowing that. So you guys aren't always in Vegas now. So yeah. is this like, are you guys do, do you guys um, do do you rotate like in Vegas and out of Vegas now and I then love. like. So on even years, we're in Vegas. Those okay. those are election years. Okay. And um and on odd years, we're we're trying to see the rest of the country. In, you know, so far we've gone to more unusual places. You know, South Dakota and Rapid City. Uh, this past year, we were in Memphis, mm -hmm. which surprised a lot of people. I loved Memphis. I thought um, the history there is such a an example of what freedom is all about. First of all, you yeah. have the presence of set of the civil rights movement. And obviously as libertarians, we truly and deeply believe in the equal value of all human beings and the right of everyone to have sovereignty over yeah. their own lives. That is a core principle that we really believe in. And at its heart, the civil rights movement is about that. And that's super, yeah. super important. Full equality under the law. To completely. And so I loved being there for that reason. But then also going back to the arts, I think it's so beautiful that all of these different cultures came together on the Mississippi River and of their own accord, using collaboration and cooperation, came together to form beautiful new art forms, uh, including rock and roll, blues, soul and funk that all happened right there in Memphis. Yeah. And it was spontaneous. It was a form of spontaneous order. Um, and it transformed the world. It gave freedom of expression to so many people. So much music has has inspired people, allowed them to express themselves. And that all came out of Memphis. And then, of course, there was the bucket, you know, in South Dakota, we had the bucket list of uh, Mount Rushmore. This had the bucket list of Graceland. Uh, which was really fun. And we had, we had kind of a, I know you guys had RFK Jr. And we did too. He came out and we did a really fun event at the car museum. At oh Elm yeah. Our museum. So we were surrounded by the pink Cadillacs and the, you know, <laughs> all the cool bikes and limos and just all of his cool. So if you were, if you were in Tennessee that year, did our friend, uh, our, our friend Glenn Jacobs, mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, get out to Freedom Fest that year? No, I don't know if he did. Oh. I would have loved it if he had. <laughs> Well, may but, have, like I said, when I'm at Freedom Fest, I get a little. A little <laughs> I can imagine. You got a lot. You got a lot to run. So, all right. So you're you're going places, not just in Vegas yeah. anymore. You've been to South Dakota. You've been to Tennessee. What's it going to take for Freedom Fest to come to uh, the real free state? You know, the yeah, number one state for freedom in America. You know, we're um, so far. We just haven't found the right space. We have a certain configuration, and yeah. so we're working with Carla to try to find the right. I know. I know she's got a place in mind, the big, I know, uh, I know. That, that big hotel in Manchester. But here's there. what's really exciting to me. So um, I, because of planning, Porkfest is always like a couple weeks before Freedom yeah, Fest. Yeah, I'm yeah. just like inundated. But next year, Freedom Fest is actually going to be before Porkfest. So I will right. be one and I get to come <laughs> and enjoy all the wonderful things about Porkfest. So I'm really excited about that next year. Well, that would be exciting. So have you ever been to Pork Fest before? I haven't. I've never had the opportunity. All right. So next year you'll do Freedom Fest first. You'll come to your first Pork Fest. We'll, we'll have to, um, that'll be awesome. We'll have to make sure you yeah, have a great I'm time. I'm super excited about it. I've, I've definitely always wanted to come and I hear such great things about, about <laughs> it. So I'm super excited. Awesome. So at Freedom Fest this year, so let's say I, I'm my first Freedom Fest you know, I'm someone who's watching this episode and I'm thinking, well, I've heard about this. You guys are saying some great things, but what what should I expect this year if they were to come out and get a ticket and go out to Vegas? Um, what should people look forward to? So, like I said, there's there's this feeling we have at Freedom Fest of creating a 360 experience of all the ways you experience liberty. 
So we have a huge main stage. And uh, this year we are featuring some really fun people. Include So Lisa Kennedy is our MC. She is hilarious, amazing. And one of the things she has started doing is that she wears these different outrageous dresses, including a taxation is theft yeah. dress um, to counter <laughs> to counteract the taxation dress that yeah. AOC wore. Um, but so she's amazing. We have our and, freedom. And I'll say for, for those who don't know, because usually she just goes by the name Kennedy. Kennedy. We're yeah. talking about Kennedy who had the show Kennedy on Fox That's Business. Right. And she's who's still um, on Fox News occasionally. And she has her own podcast now called Kennedy Saves the World that is hilarious and very interesting. Um, so she's a big supporter and one of our ambassadors. We also have John yeah. Mackey, Steve Forbes, Spike Cohen, who we all love. Yeah. Uh, Larry Sharp and Maj Therese are all of our awesome. ambassadors. So they will be there. Um, this year, our big uh, keynote speaker is Ice T, and we're really excited to have him join us and talk about his fight for freedom of speech, censorship, and pushing back on, um, you know, the status quo. We're at our theme this year is: Are we entering a brave new world? Mm -hmm. And with all the technology coming out, the AI, some of the health and medical things that are are technologically happening. Um, there's a real threat that there's a negative brave new world coming. And there could also be some positive elements. Like we're breaking into something new and AI will be a great thing. And Bitcoin will be amazing. <laughs> you know, all of this kind of stuff. But I think asking questions about the status quo and asking tough questions about it and challenging that is a really amazing thing. And we're excited to hear Ice-T talk about that. We also have Steven Pinker and Lord Matt Ridley coming. Both will be talking about progress and innovation, um, science and all that cool stuff. We also have Sean Nelson from Lovesack. He is an amazing entrepreneur. He was the winner of Richard Branson's uh, uh, Rebel uh, Business Program back in the, in the 2000s and has taken Lovesack from literally something he built in his mom's basement, you know, 25 years ago to now it's a billion dollar company on NASDAQ. And he's super fascinating in how he tells that, that story. Tom Woods is coming, Michael Shermer, uh, Robert Kiyosaki and oh. Darren, yeah, I love <laughs> rich dad, poor dad. I've got to meet, I've got to meet Robert Kiyosaki. I my when I was in, um, boy, I think it was in the seventh grade. My dad gave me a copy of rich dad, poor dad. And like, I just like, read through all the re Robert Kiyosaki. I was a weird middle schooler. Like everyone else is reading. Well, <laughs> not like you were, the other kids were even reading the fact that I was reading anything was something, but like I'm yeah. reading like, you know, biz like a uh, cash flow quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. So anyway, <laughs> that's impressive. I, that is impressive. <laughs> I'm really, I, I didn't know he was going to be there. I'm going to really look forward to meeting him and maybe I'll bring that old copy. See if he'll si sign it for me. But, um, Glad to hear, you know, uh, boy, so many of the names that you've named. Spike Cohen is ex exciting to hear. He's going to be there. Of course, Spike will, I'm glad we're, he's, he'll be uh, coming after, because uh, he, he'll yeah. be at Porkfest this year. Yeah. So I guess he's getting around. Uh, our, our good friend, Tom Woods. Um, mm -hmm. we, I don't think, I don't know that he's coming to Porkfest this year, though. We've had him in the past, but it'll be great to see him at, at Freedom Fest. Um, it sounds like a really uh, awesome lineup of folks you guys have. It is. And, um, we also uh, really excited. We've just confirmed some additional speakers that I can kind of. Uh, oh yeah, you had an announcement that you were gonna that you yeah. were. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll I'll tell folks I'll tell folks to set this up right. So we record this on Monday, and it's released on Wednesday. Now on Tuesday, I'm told that Valerie and the folks at Freedom Fest are going to be making an announcement. So mm -hmm. Valerie's going to share. I'm with breaking us it here. So you're breaking it here, but you're going to get, but our audience will hear about it after yeah. the official breaking. So technically you, those listening should be excited that they, well, maybe are not the first to know. I don't know how it all works out. <laughs> Temporally, anyway, it feels like we're getting the news before anyone else. Well, we're really excited that uh, President Javier Malay will be coming to Freedom Fest. Oh, wow. And we're just thrilled. Uh, it has been a long process, but because there's so many negotiations if you have a head yeah. of state um, coming to your conference. And uh, he is very excited to come and represent Argentina and to talk with the other 
important investors, donors, yeah. supporters, policymakers, and to talk about his vision for libertarian politics and the impact on the global stage and some of the things that he's working on in Argentina. So that's going to be a very important keynote address on Saturday. The conference this year is Jul July 10th through the 13th. That's a Wednesday yeah. through a Saturday. And we have amazing speakers every single day. Justin Amash actually is going to come on Friday as well. And we are going to do our global economic summit um, on Thursday. And we are ha have also confirmed that we are partnering with Free and Equal Elections and doing a full third party independent candidate debate at a really high level, broadcasting that out because the, this rhetoric between left and right and that those are the only two views and these, this two party system is just, there are so many people craving and desperate for another view. These, the yeah. independent voter, the third party voter, and honestly, there are views out there that need to be shared. There are other ways of running this country. And again, we're going to have multiple different perspectives. It's not going to be just the libertarian view, but we'll have the Constitution Party, mm -hmm. Green Party, some other independent candidates. We're in negotiation right now with all the different candidates that will be there. But we are going to be doing a very high level presidential debate where we can talk about these other ways to approach governance that every American deserves to hear and and know that the left-right dynamic is not the only dynamic out there. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that too. Well, that that is really exciting. I that, that's that's big news. Uh, <laughs> Javier Malay is coming. You know that I, I'll I'll uh, really look for, now. I was already excited to be coming to Freedom <laughs> Fest this year. Now I'm very excited. You know, I will say the one critique I have about Javier Malay, it's too bad he's not a real libertarian because he doesn't live in New Hampshire. Right. <laughs> That's Are you even really a libertarian definition. if you live in Argentina <laughs> when you should be coming to the free state and building a libertarian homeland there? I guess we'll give him a pass if he's uh, uh, yeah, the president of his country. To. I think you may have to. <laughs> no, well, that, that's, that's really exciting. A, it is really exciting. We're delighted. And our understanding is that he um, was immediately interested and said, yes, I want to go to Freedom Fest. So um, we're, we're delighted that he'll be coming. And we know he'll have very important things to say. Um, and to be part of this important conversation that we have at Freedom Fest, because, you know, I really feel that important things are happening. And, and just like at Porkfest, we need to be having these conversations and finding practical solutions forward. You know, it's not enough to just, oh, this sucks and this is terrible and what, you know, this is horrible and we hate this person. That's great, you know. Yeah. We can all dislike the people who are leading us down the wrong path, but what are we going to do about it? Right. You know, what's our and positive that's, vision? And, right. and that's one of the things I, why I've always been a huge supporter of Free State Project at Freedom Fest, because I appreciate so much that there's this practical, here's something we can do to have influence. And maybe we can't yet change the whole country, but we can change the state. And then as we do that, maybe then we can have you know, a, a toppling yeah. effect, which I think is amazing. So we talk about other, you know, free autonomous regions where people can live and like a Prospera or a free enterprise city. We talk about Bitcoin, blockchain, um, AI in the way that it leads us to greater freedom. How do you have financial freedom in your life? How do you figure out ways to be less dependent on government? How including in your health care and things like that. So uh, coming to Freedom Fest, you will walk away with really practical solutions that will allow you to experience greater freedom in your life and to help facilitate that in your business or in your community um, so that that same thing where if it starts here, I really yeah. believe in the Gandhi approach. You've got to start with, have you cleared limiting beliefs from your own mind? Have you kept... Yeah. You know, do you keep your, do you hold yourself back? And how yeah. do we, even collectively as a libertarian movement, yeah. do we have limiting beliefs where we kind of hold ourselves back from thinking, no, we really can have more freedom and we can have it now. I love Harry Brown's like how to live free in an unfree world just to say, screw it. I'm just going to live free and here, I'll just figure out how to not be sub subjugate myself to all of this. Yeah. Uh, freedom is a state of mind. And, um, you are as much of a slave as you allow yourself to be. 
Yeah, it's it's really true. And as we engage with people and have these important conversations and then do something about it, I think that's such a key part in whatever capacity. And I love that, you know, specialization is amongst us. So you guys are doing Free State Project and one of our exhibitors, Goldback, is creating Goldback infused, you know, I think they've even, did they come to, I think they came to, to pork fest. That's right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're talking and, about and the, the, the whole mark gold infused bills, right? Yes. So they're yeah. coming, they the got their back. start at freedom fest. Jeremy Corden All right. came, met the guys at Valorum and said, I'm going to start this business and, and it's flourishing. And that kind of thing happens all the time. But another area that I want to bring up to you, Eric, that I think is super important. And we're really trying to figure this out at freedom fest is we have, we have unfortunately relegated way too much of the arts world to status yes. and authoritarian yes. thinking. <laughs> You're singing my and, tune. <laughs> and, 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 and so many people get their concept, their deep belief systems about the value of something, the meaning of something through art. Mm -hmm. And when we are not producing films, music, performance art, visual art, poetry that is infused and laid upon true libertarian philosophy. We are missing, we're not even just missing an opportunity. We are allowing for people to then be just mind molded into an untrue belief system. And I really believe that we need to be supporting artists in deep and profound ways to create high quality art across yeah. the board. And I'm thinking about like Heinlein level literature where, I mean, Robert Heinlein was just brilliant at the way he infused his, his yeah. science fiction with these libertarian I ideals. And it wasn't something where he was like trying to preach libertarian ideals it was just infused in good literature. And so I'm challenging somebody out there to make, you know, the Hamilton that is super, so catchy and amazing and musical and inventive and creative, but espouses libertarian ideas. Yeah, well, I, I have refused to see Hamilton until Thomas Jefferson gets his own musical. So I think that's the libertarian. Somebody to write that from the. You know, so I'm still waiting it's for it. Be great. That, <laughs> that's so going to be the have, libertarian answer to Hamilton. It'll just be called Jefferson. Jefferson. <laughs> Jeff. Or so. Yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah. But so at Freedom Fest, we have a film festival, the Anthem Film Festival. It's been around, been around since 2011. And we have brought together films that care about choice, individuality, accountability, and they, you don't have to just be, we have a lot of people who aren't necessarily a libertarian filmmaker, but they've made a film that espouses libertarian values. And so we do shorts and full length documentaries and narratives. There are panel discussions after them. We also have our comedy show, uh, the Punching Up Comedy Show, which is all about freedom of expression, satire, mm -hmm. political satire. That was launched in uh, 2021. Dave Smith, Lou Perez, Brittany Hunter, and Grover Norquist were actually all of our first comedians in that. What Doug a collection. Smith, Grover Dave Norquist in there as well. With, he was with amazing. He's, actually, he's got his little five minutes. It's really I, good. I, 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 be, I believe it. I believe it. He's he's a really nice guy, actually. And um, yeah. uh, When he's not so, drowning government in the bathtub. <laughs> Actually, that's probably one of the nicest things about him. So, <laughs> so, um, so that's really cool. We're going to have live art this year, uh, making sculpture, having a collaborative art um, process, and uh, also bringing in live music. So we really have to be, and we're trying to invite more creatives, more funders, more producers of, of art to come together and start talking about this and finding projects they want to work on together to elevate this resource of great libertarian infused art that can change yeah. hearts and minds of people and get them understanding what this is all about. So that's, I'm really excited about that at Freedom Fest too. 
Well, that's exciting, and I know I remember going to one of uh, Tom Woods' house parties years back, and I think um, uh, I, I don't know if it was, if it was your 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 mom, okay. yeah, Joanne, you know, who, who was it. talking about the the film festival and the effort there. And you know what? It is, um, you know, I'll tell you, you know, as I hear you talk about kind of the need for more of a liberty loving presence in the performing arts and and institutions within the performing arts that that create spaces where you can have. Yeah. Um, uh, liberty influence culture creation. Um, it seems like one, not only do we desperately need it, but there's never been a better opportunity and space for it because we just saw in the COVID era, the performing arts completely self-destruct, just yeah. completely shoot themselves in the foot. I, I tell you sometimes, you know, I used to be a professional actor uh, after got my BFA in acting was in New York city for a couple oh, of years yeah. before I joined the Ron Paul campaign. And, and life took a different turn. But sometimes I think about, you know, what if I'd stayed on that path? Mm -hmm. And I just thought, boy, those COVID years would have been miserable. <laughs> uh, uh, so, because yeah, because Freedom Fest got shut down and my dance stuff, I'm still recovering. Yeah. From not dancing. Like, I couldn't how, do the Zoom thing. <laughs> how does an industry, an industry that is so built upon the necessity of people being in the same room together, breathing the same air, uh, 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 working like, I mean, the, uh, particularly particularly live theater it's just like and yet this was the industry that bent over the backwards the most to, to prove how compliant they were yeah. we, anyway i'm sorry i don't mean to go on a whole run, i'm but. totally with you and that is one of the reasons that you know i appreciate so much the ways that zoom and social media and in some ways does really bring us together, but you can't replace that in-person experience. Yes. You can't replace the tangibility of nature, the tangibility of, of some being in someone's energy presence. And that is one of the reasons that freedom fest is an in-person event. And we played around with some streaming and zooming and we just have decided we're not doing that. Freedom fest is like, you got to come and be there and yep. you, you know, like I'm loving meeting you, but I'm really looking forward to when we can handshake in <laughs> at Freedom Fest. We'll and... have to have a dance off or something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hawkins versus Duncan, the ultimate. Yeah, I'm not against that actually. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we'll save it for Pork Fest next year. Th things Either can be way, especially I'm wild down. at Pork Fest. I am down. <laughs> awesome. Well, we are we're we're running out of time, okay. so. I want to give you the last word and then we have a special discount code for our audience who might be interested in getting a ticket to Freedom Fest. So let me give you the last word, then we'll share the discount code. Fabulous. Well, I just want to thank everyone for listening and sincerely invite everyone out there to come out to Freedom Fest. Las Vegas is a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't seen the sphere yet, it's really super cool. We're going to be together July 10th through the 13th, and it is an intellectual feast at Freedom Fest. Anything that you're interested in, I guarantee you, you will find sessions and people who are into that. You will encounter experts that you can sit down and talk with, have a beer with, shake hands with, uh, any aspect of your life where you feel like, I want to experience more freedom, you will find ways to gain that additional freedom at Freedom Fest. You will come away feeling enlightened, excited, enthusiastic, and like you're not alone, <laughs> you know, that there are people like you who are fighting with you. And so I, I would love to see you at Freedom Fest. Come contemplate with us. Are we entering a brave new world? And is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> well, I, I, um, I'm looking forward to it. And I certainly do think, you know, my wife and I recently read A Brave New World um, together, and it certainly seems like as much as we as libertarians are, um, I think, rightfully scared of a 1984-style dystopia, I think the Bra Brave New World probably predicted the Keynesian dystopian that we are heading into uh, even more accurately. Yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting to comp contemplate along with so many great folks, including the president of Argentina, Javier Malay. So folks can get their tickets for Freedom Fest at freedomfest.com. And while you're there, you can use uh, the special discount code just for our audience. It is FSP50. And you uh, use that at checkout to save $50 off the current attendee price for Freedom Fest. So after you go to Pork Fest, you can double up on Freedom Festivals this year 
and get over to Freedom Fest. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Valerie, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. I look forward to meeting you in person. Likewise, Eric. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and I will see you in Vegas. All right. I'll see you in Vegas. All right, everyone. That's the show. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, I've told you about Pork Fest, told you about Freedom Fest. There's going to be some great events this summer. Uh, so wherever I see you, I'm looking forward to seeing you at one or both. Uh, and uh, in closing, I want to, as always, thank our technical producer, Justin O'Donnell, for all his work making this show run so smoothly. And furthermore, my opinion is the Federal Reserve should be destroyed.